What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another Dark Matter Guide. In today's episode, we're going to be covering how to get all of the different camos for the launchers in Black Ops 3. Let's get into it. All right guys, so let's just hop right into it here. The first big tip, and this is the reason I wanted to cover the launchers before I covered a bunch of the other stuff. The first big tip I have for getting camos for the launchers is work on the launchers while you're working on the other guns in the game. So while you're going for headshots for your assault rifles or SMGs or you're going for your one-shot kills or sniper rifles, whatever it might be, work on the launchers alongside this. It'll be very frustrating if you get to the end and you've completed all the other guns in the game and you're trying to get dark matter and all you have left is launchers. That gets very, very frustrating. So try to work on them alongside. I mean, if it's too late already and you've fallen into that trap where you've got all your camos done for everything else and you just have launchers to do, I feel sorry for you, but I'll do the best I can to help you out anyways here. So first up with the launchers, we have our initial challenge that we have to complete before unlocking the final five challenges. And this initial set of challenges is obviously not headshots, unlike a lot of the other weapons in the game. With the launchers, we need to shoot down 100 score streaks to unlock the final five challenges. And for these first 100 score streaks you have to shoot down, there's really not much to say aside from just play normally, but have a launcher ready to go on your class. Every time you hear enemy UAV inbound or whatever it might be, stop what you're doing, shoot down the UAV, and then just continue playing. It's as simple as that. Now, once you destroy that first 100 score streaks for the XM53 and the Black Cell, you will unlock the final five challenges. And the first of the five challenges, which is the Ardent Challenge, is actually different between the Black Cell and XM53. So first, we're going to start out with the XM53's Ardent Challenge. This one requires you to get 10 direct impact infantry kills with the XM53. The key here is direct impact. This doesn't just mean kill a player with the XM53 by shooting it at his feet or something. You have to actually hit him directly with the rocket of the XM53. While this might sound a little bit difficult at first, and I know a lot of people do struggle with this, all it takes is concussion grenades and the heatwave specialist ability. If you're using this combination here, it makes this so much easier. Just play whatever game mode you want. Uh, free for all works for this quite well because you can often isolate your gunfights into 1v1 situations so you don't have to worry about teammates. But just run concussion grenades. Uh, probably want to have scavenger on there as well. Don't just run around with the launcher out, like use your gun and everything. But when you run into a situation where you're able to successfully stun an enemy, like double stun him, run up on him, switch to your launcher, and just shoot him directly up close. You don't want to try and pick people off at a distance with this because it doesn't really shoot straight most of the time. So it's really just luck based if you're trying to shoot him at a distance. Try and close that distance as much as possible, even if you're pretty much point blank to the point where you almost kill yourself with your own launcher. It will still count even if you do kill yourself with your own launcher. So get up as close as possible so you minimize the chances of missing. Concussion grenades work pretty good, but obviously there's a counter, which is Tac Mask. And this is where Heat Wave comes in. Heat Wave is incredible for this because there's no counter to it and they can't really move much at all. It's pretty crazy. Once you Heat Wave a guy, just get out of his line of sight, obviously, because he can still shoot back. He can't really turn, but he can shoot back. So Heat Wave him, get beside him or behind him and you'll have tons of time to get up close and just line up your shot. So that's the Ardent Camo Challenge for the XM53. Now for the Black Cell, we have something completely different because you can't free fire it, therefore it's pretty difficult to get direct impact infantry kills. It's possible, but very difficult. So instead, the challenge for the Black Cell is take out five airstreaks within 20 seconds of deployment with the Black Cell. Now what this means is you just have to do this five times, so it's not like you have to destroy five score streaks within 20 seconds or anything like that. It's just every time a UAV is called in, for instance, you have 20 seconds to take it down. If you take it down within 20 seconds, it will count as one out of the five for this challenge. It's actually quite simple. You don't even really need to think too much about this one because most of the time, if you're just really vigilant at shooting down UAVs and counter UAVs, things like that, you will be shooting it down well within that 20 seconds of it being called in. So with this one, there's really not too much for me to tell you, aside from as soon as you hear that announcer say enemy UAV inbound or enemy counter UAV inbound, just pull out your launcher and shoot it down. So those are the only two challenges that are actually different between the Black Cell and the XM53. From now on, they're all exactly the same, so I'll cover them at the same time here. And the next one we have here is the Burnt Challenge. This one requires you to destroy five score streaks in a single game with that launcher. 
And this one, once again, it's quite easy because you only have to do this once. And most of the time you can actually complete this within the first game of you trying to do it. Assuming your enemies are able to put up some UAVs and, and any kind of score streak really. But generally UAVs and counter UAVs are just the easiest things to shoot down. This one is slightly game mode dependent. Uh, most game modes you will have the opportunity to shoot down five UAVs within a single game. But the one I would definitely stay away from is Safeguard. Safeguard doesn't really have lots of streaks going around. Like even getting a UAV in Safeguard is a bit of an accomplishment. I mean, it's not super difficult, but you don't see UAVs all over the place like you would in Domination or Demolition or Hardpoint or Kill Confirmed. So stick to one of those game modes where UAVs are very prevalent and it'll be a very easy challenge to complete. If you do want to maximize your odds, maybe you're competing against teammates for shooting stuff down. Put the engineer perk on because you will be able to see all of the score streaks on the minimap and through walls if they're ground score streaks. So that really helps in your ability to shoot these score streaks down. Moving on to the next camo, we have the bliss camo. This one requires you to destroy two score streaks rapidly with that launcher. You only have to do this one once and it's once again fairly easy. We're not getting to the difficult challenges yet. We're almost at the difficult ones for the launchers that really hold people up. But for this one, UAVs and counter UAVs are what you're going to want to focus on, especially with the XM53, because you only get two rockets per life, so you really have to make them count. As far as the timing for how fast you have to actually shoot them, I don't know what that exact timing is. It's extremely difficult to test something like that, because you don't know if you've done it until the challenge is completed. And once you've completed the challenge, then you can't really complete it again and uh, figure that stuff out. But basically, like, if there's two UAVs in the air, you shoot one, reload, shoot the other one, and there's your rapid kill. Simple as that. If you are struggling with this challenge, I'd highly recommend running Engineer as well as Hardwired. Now, why do we want to run Hardwired? This is for those people that will call in a UAV and a counter UAV at the same time. If they call in the counter UAV at the same time as the UAV, your Engineer perk is pretty much useless because it's actually blocking off your minimap, so you won't be able to see where that UAV is on the minimap. So if you have hardwired, you now have your minimap back, so you can see both the counter UAV as well as the UAV. You can see their exact location based on the minimap, and this just helps you locate them a little bit faster. It's absolutely not required to have these perks, but if you're struggling, like I said, it definitely helps. All right, now it's finally time for the difficult challenges. These are the ones that are going to be hanging people up the most. These are probably the challenges you're here on this video for, and I'm going to kind of combine the two of them. We're going to cover them both at the same time because they're very similar. They're basically the same premise behind them. The first one is the Battle Camel. This one requires you to destroy five talents or Cerberuses with that particular launcher. Not in a single game or anything, just five total. And then the next one is the Chameleon Challenge, and this one requires you to destroy 10 turrets, so Guardians, Hardened Sentries, or Power Cores, with the launcher. So first off, I just want to cover what's most frustrating about this challenge, is that it doesn't rely necessarily on your skill, it relies on your enemies not only running these particular score streaks, but also being able to earn these particular score streaks. And that's what really sucks about it, because if you're a really good player, a lot of times you're killing the enemies so often that they can't earn these streaks, or maybe you're just playing against people that never run these streaks. So there are a few things that we can do to maximize the odds of the enemies earning these particular streaks. And first off is game modes. Once again, we don't want to be touching safeguard for these challenges. It's relatively rare that you'll be running into any of these score streaks in safeguard, whereas it's much more common to run into these streaks in game modes like Domination, Demolition, and Kill Confirmed. Kill Confirmed especially, I find to be one of the modes where streaks get called in the most because there's so much score to go around with all of the tags that you have to pick up. The second thing we can do to maximize the odds of running into these streaks, and this is more for like those desperate measures, like if the launchers are the absolute last thing you have to get Dark Matter and you really want to get it complete, is run the Care Package score streak, call it in in enemy territory, and even more, you can run Engineer. So if you get one of these streaks in the Care Package, then you leave it for the enemy team. It works best if you're playing with a team and you can ask your teammates to not take the care package and let the enemies have it. But if you are playing solo, just make sure you call it really deep into enemy territory and hope that it's one of these streaks. Now, if it is one of those streaks, let the enemies take it. And there you go. You can now destroy that streak. If it isn't, then you can try and re-roll it with engineer if you can get close enough to it because you are calling it deep in enemy territory, like I said, and hope for the best there as well. 
Aside from that, there is one other tactic that a lot of people won't like because they like their stats a lot. And a lot of people might frown upon it as well because they might consider it a form of boosting, but it really isn't because you're not actually organizing anything with the other team. This simple strategy is run out and get yourself killed a bunch. Like I said, if you're a really good player and you're constantly slaying the enemy team, they're not going to be getting any score streaks. But if you're constantly running out like a chicken with his head cut off and getting killed, it's more likely the enemies are going to be getting streaks. But this is a pretty extreme measure that I know a lot of people won't want to do because it'll ruin your kill death ratio. So it's absolutely not required. It's just a last ditch thing if you're really desperate to get these launcher challenges done. Now, let's get into some more specifics for how to actually shoot these down most effectively. So first up, we'll start with the Talon. With the Talon, I've noticed that more and more people, when they call a Talon in, they will actually control it, and they'll fly it straight over towards your spawn. So if you hear that an enemy Talon has been called in, first off, it really helps to have engineers so you can see exactly where it is, but even if you don't, just get your launcher out, find a little bit of cover, at least somewhere you can like duck into cover if that Talon uh, comes after you, but just get pre-aimed, up in the sky, uh, fairly low in the sky, because obviously the talons don't usually go super high up in the sky, and just pre-aim with your launcher. Most of the time, as that talon comes around a corner or comes over like a rock or whatever it might be, you can get locked onto that talon and get your shot off before it can actually kill you. So that's the most effective way to take out a talon in my opinion. Next up, we have the Cerberus. And the Cerberus is a bit difficult in that it takes three rockets to actually shoot. So especially with the XM53, this kind of sucks because you only get two rockets per life. And a lot of the times you'll put two rockets into it and then you'll have to get yourself killed and then you respawn. And by the time you get back to the Cerberus, a teammate has swooped in and taken your kill. So the best way to take out a Cerberus, and this is the most efficient way by far, it doesn't matter if you're using the Black Cell or the XM53, is have a class ready to go with two EMP grenades, Engineer, as well as Cold Blooded. Blind Eye could be a good addition as well, but Cold Blood is the one that will keep you safe from the Cerberus if it is AI controlled. If the player is not controlling it, then you'll be completely safe as long as you're not standing next to teammates, of course, uh, with that Cold Blooded perk. And the big thing with this is the EMP grenades. So with the EMP grenades, if you throw both EMP grenades, it will now only take one rocket to destroy that Cerberus. So this is definitely the fastest, most efficient way to take out the Cerberus with a launcher. Moving on to the turrets, I'm really only going to talk about the Hardened Sentry as well as the Guardian because power cores are extremely rare. So I'm going to bet that 99% of these turret kills are going to be coming from Hardened Sentries and Guardians. So if it's a Hardened Sentry, it's the same tactic as a Cerberus, but you only want to throw one EMP grenade. If you throw two EMP grenades, then the EMPs alone will destroy the Hardened Sentry. If you throw one EMP grenade, it now only takes one rocket to take out that Hardened Sentry. As for the Guardian, unfortunately you can't use the EMP grenades on it at all because if you use one EMP grenade, that's all it takes to take out a Guardian. So with the Guardian, it's going to take you two rockets from full health or you can put a bunch of damage into it with whatever you happen to have, your gun, grenades, whatever it might be, and then you can just shoot it with the one rocket. Now one little bonus tip I wanted to throw in at the end of the video here that a lot of people still don't know about that's quite interesting is when you're locking onto a streak with your launcher, there's actually a little number that appears there. That number displays exactly how many rockets it's going to take to finish off that score streak. This can be very helpful, especially if you want to be that guy that steals the, the score streak kill from a teammate, which, hey, sometimes it's every man for himself, right? If you see a teammate is aiming a launcher at a Cerberus, for instance, and you're also aiming at that with your launcher, and you see a number two there, Maybe you just want to wait for your teammate to fire his shot first and then you get the final launcher shot in and you get the kill rather than you taking the shot first and now they get to finish it off. So just a little tip that might help you in a few situations to get these kills. So there you have it. Once you complete those final five challenges, you unlock gold for that launcher. Once you get gold for both launchers, you get diamond for the launchers. And then finally, once you get diamond for every gun and weapon in the game, you will get dark matter. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.